Hey folks, back with the new episode of the uh, Free to Play playthrough. Um, I know it's been a while. So, uh, <laughs> oh crap, I didn't click the button. There we go. I forgot to click the button for this. I'll explain what, what's going on in a second here. Um, that's why I wasn't hearing the, the thingy. That was a mistake. Okay, so. Uh, the summer event's going on. Uh, I'm doing some of the summer event stuff right now. Do the leg kick. Leg kick. You can type this. You, you can type the emote to get the emote to do it also, but. So yeah, you earn lo 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 not. Oh god, I can't pronounce it. Lo not favor. Um, it's the, the right to the snake. Uh, and that's the currency you use for the various gear and stuff you can get here. So yeah, uh, and I'll explain some stuff with that in a minute. Uh, I just want to get this... We're going to have to do this. This is not the most exciting thing ever, but it's, you know, it's kind of goofy fun. So, yes, uh, right, so, things we're going to be doing in this episode, uh, we're going to be doing, uh, some of the events here on, uh, on Ryza, just so I can show a few of them off, um, a couple I probably won't get to today, uh, because I need to save a bit more lull not favor to afford some of the things that I want for it. But yeah, uh, but the big thing we're going to be talking about is uh, the uh, come on, is we're going to be talking about the tier six coupon ships. So they're they're doing a thing where there's you can earn points towards getting a coupon for a free tier six ship from the, the Zen store. I'm going to look at the stuff from the Zen store yeah, and see which one I would personally recommend for picking up for a free-to-play account. Uh, and explain my thought process on that and such. 
Uh, and we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, I just wanted to... Do the snake! Do the running man! Oh, it's running man. This is quite possibly the easiest of the events. <laughs> How long the, the I forget how long the dance dance contest the dance party lasts. It does last a while. To the running man. All right, I have earned fifty favors so far. Not bad. Not amazing, but you know. Wave your hands. So, part of the reason we want to get the law in that favor is uh, there's a bunch of. I don't remember how much the actual gear is useful for here. I have to look at the the, the thing, but there's gear you can get here. Um, there's fun stuff you can get here. A lot of cosmetic stuff. And uh, we'll be doing looking. Club style. Yep. Doot, do, 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 do. do the side step. Oh yeah, we're dancing. Wave your hands. We're looking like idiots, which is fine. All right, the one problem I did have is I the one thing I did did do off stream that I meant to do on stream and I forgot about. I forgot I was going to do this uh, until after I did it. Was the uh, event for the ship here, uh, which I will show. I'll basically demonstrate sort of how it works, but. Almost done. Yeah, the this is not the most exciting thing, but yeah. But at any rate, uh, yeah. So we'll definitely be looking at the ships that we're thinking about for the. I'm, I'm thinking about for this account and why I'm thinking about them for this account. Uh, there are a couple of different possible options and ways to go, in my opinion. And the side step. Uh, I mean, oh, excuse me. Um, basically. There's a couple of decisions I ha that I have to sort of th in think about for this account, and that any free-to-play player of this game really needs Save to think about. Uh, 
the first one being is, are you planning on just focusing on one character and pouring everything into that one character? Uh, or are you planning on um, making alts that you want to actively play in addition to the, your main character? Uh, like, I do recommend making alts even if you're not planning, on, even if you're planning on playing just one character, just for stuff like Dilithium Farming and such. Uh, you really want to have enough alternate characters to Wave your hands. make Dilithium that way and do, you know, for ver various things. And they're, ha they're handy to have, even if you're not playing and actively playing them. Um. I'm not sure if I'm going to get any more favor or not from this. I might have maxed it out already. I think there's a max you can earn from this. I might have hit it already. I'm thinking about it. Raise the roof. And we're down to a minute left. Oh, there we go. 50 more. Nice. Oh, I got an accolade. Samba Master. Nice! So I earned a total of 100 favor from that. That's not bad. I think it brings me to 150 at the moment. Hey, Kazus, how you doing? Um, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I should add... Dance fool or tomfoolery. So, all right. Um, so if you're gonna do the summer event, and I recommend doing the summer event because you can get a free ship from it, and uh, I think you still got time to get it. Let me check. Let me check my calendar. All right. If you were to start the thing right today, which is currently July 10th, um, the summer event lasts through the 31st. Maybe longer, actually. My last is the 22nd. Let me look, let me look up the dates on this. Hang on. So, movement 2019... Uh, looks like it's lasting to the 15th of August, according to the wiki, which is not entirely right. Let me look this up because I'm gonna say I'm gonna say something. I'm gonna get this wrong if I don't look it up. So I'm gonna look it up. I want that page open. All right, from July 2nd through August 15th, apparently, although it's 
it's showing up here. Like these boxes are filled here. I'm not sure why they're filled. But let's say it's to the 15th for now. Today's the 10th. Uh, you need to basically do 25 of them in the row like the winter events. So it'd be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. So you, if you were to start today, you would fit, you would, and did it every day, you'd finish on the third, leaving you 12 x, basically giving you wiggle room of 12 days. Uh, it's a little bit more than that because it's technically every 20 hours and not every 24 hours. So you can squeeze a few extra in here and there if you try. I know people have done that uh, on previous events when I pointed that out. The ship in question, uh, we're going to look at its stats. Uh, that's the wrong one. There we go. I'm going to put this up on the screen here. There we go. All right. So the you will be getting the tier six Ryzen Corvette. Now, uh, the big thing about the Ryzen Corvette is, uh, all right. So it is a Corvette. So it's it's basically it's it's a bit squishy. It's got hull modifier 0 0.9, shield modifier 0 0.9. So it's fragile. Four forward, three aft, standard escort sort of setup, two device slots. Commander Tactical, Lieutenant Tactical for Seating, Com Lieutenant Commander Engineering, Ensign Science, and Lieutenant Commander Universal Pilot. Solid bridge officer seating. Can do, very flexible, can do a lot of stuff with it. Thumbs up. Four Tactical, four Engineering, three Science Labs. Uh, the nice thing is this, one's, this one is usable from level one on. It's one, They've been doing that with all the Tier 6 ships. In fact, all Tier 6 ships now can be played from level one, which is really cool. Uh, base turn rate of, of 21 degrees per second. Base impulse modifier 0.27 which is one of the highest I've ever seen. Um, I think that might that might actually be the fa the highest impulse modifier in the game. I'm not positive on that. I'll have to l I'd have to do some additional research, but it does beat out a bunch of raiders that have really high impulse mods like the uh, D4X, uh, 90 inertia. So it's not quite as n turny as the D4X, for example, but it's faster and has I think slightly better in inertia, which means it it comes it starts turning and accelerates and deaccelerates better. Um, can use dual cannons unsurprisingly. Um, standard escort uh, Starship Mastery package. Uh, comes with a co universal console, subspace wake generator. When activated, your Starship impulse engines go into overdrive, causing the subspace wake nearby that damages and slows nearby foes, while also improving your own mobility. This console also provides a passive boost to flight speed and maximum engine power. That's cute. It's not an amazing console, but it's a fun console. Neat. And if you've got room, great. Uh, it's got its own unique uh, experimental weapon, so it gives you a new experimental weapon type, which is always fun. Um, uh, the interesting thing about it is that its fire rate improves the higher engine rating, engine power, high, more power you have in your engines, which is kind of neat. That's different. Uh, its trait is Rhythmic Rumble. Uh, when you get to Tier 5, you unlock the Rhythmic Rumble Starship trait. While this trait is slotted, activating any auxiliary power to the inertial dampeners or any pilot bridge officer ability grants you boost the damage resistance rating and weapon power cost based on your speed, which is interesting. So if you're moving fast and you act, it, it gives a reason to use some of the pilot maneuvers, which are not great. Ox uh, to internal dampeners is okay. Here's the really cool thing though, is after you get this, and if you're part of a fleet for one fleet uh, ship, one, one fleet ship module, so things that you use to build fleet ships. You can actually build a fleet Ryzen Corvette, which improves its hull mod and shield mod to 0.99 each, which is very nice. Brings them just below standard for the you know, sort of dead average for those. Uh, everything else stays basically the same, except that the t commander seat becomes uh, tactical pilot and lieutenant tactical pilot for the tactical slot seating. And the lieutenant commander slot loses its, its pilot. So it moves the piloting pow powers over to the commander seat, which is interesting. Um, has all the usual stuff, doesn't have a trait because it's a fleet ship. Um, doesn't change its uh, console mods, which is interesting because most fleet ships do Im improve their co total number of consoles. So I'm wondering if that's a, t if that's a typo. I'm not sure. We'll see. Um, but it at gives it pilot maneuvers. You can get, you get pilot maneuvers now. Which is really cool. I'm really looking forward to that. That's really cool. Um, 
And, you know, as I've mentioned before, you can pretty much be able to buy a fleet mod on the exchange, uh, I think. Let me double check. I have actually since... Uh, oh, hang on. Let me turn off this display capture here. Let me go back to the... Um, I picked up a fleet ship module, if I remember correctly, off the exchange. Someone had listed it for under under price, and I had I had the EC for it, so I grabbed it. Um, that's sort of one of the things I do on on the free to play account is I will check the exchange from time to time for things I know sell for have a steady sort of sell price, and see if people less them for a, a bit less, and I can afford it, so I can buy it, relist it, and make a little profit. Um, If I remember correctly, I thought I bought one. The Horgon hunt has started. Talk to the Horgon collector to participate. I will do that in a minute as soon as I see if I can find it. I guess I didn't grab it. Unless it's my inventory, which is possible. I could have sworn I... Or maybe I sold it off, actually. That's possible, actually. Now I'm thinking about it. That is actually possible. I think I sold it for funding for something else. Okay. That's reasonable. But one of the things I did do is I actually did get up to enough dilithium to trade that on the, ex uh, on the exchange for enough Zen to buy the credit cap increase. So my credit cap is now $2 billion. Well, Fleetship Module is going for about 10 mil right now, uh, which even with a, without the base free-to-play uh, account, uh, with, your ba with the base credit cap, you can actually afford these. You can actually buy you can buy them So if you save up for it. So that's actually entirely doable for a free-to-play account. I'm really, really pleased about that right now. So very cool. All right. Uh, I'm not going to do the Horgan Hunt right now because there's other stuff I want to show you guys first. Um we're going to be doing some of this stuff, and we're going to be probably do my Universal Endeavor. Ah, damn. Polar on damage. I'll see if I can find uh, a cheap Polar on weapon for that. Um, so, the first time you come here, um, what you're going to do... Uh, you can get you... First, you can you have to be level 10 to go to do to start this event. So you get to level 10, not hard. Is um, you're going to need a floater. Now, the floaters are... Most of the stuff here costs uh, the favor stuff. You can buy a... You can rent a floater for 1,000 credits, which will last, I think, like 20 hours or so. I, for, I forget. Uh, it's a rental. Um, but you basically, you come here, you talk to the event coordinator, she'll give you a little thing where you have to basically... She gives you a favor, you go into the reputation thing, you start a project for it, and you trade in. It's, it's much like the way it worked in the winter event. Um, you just follow the instructions, you get that, and then you can get a floater from the rental floater from him and talk to her to do flying high, which I can do again, although I can't, I don't believe I'll get the, I won't get the favor for it. Yeah, I'm just going to get low on my favor. I'm not going to get the, uh, the event reward. So I actually can show you what the event looks like, which is, which is good. So you get, uh, basically you get these, uh, prize vouchers. You get 40 of them for each, uh, each, you can get 40 of them each day from doing this event once. And it, once you get to a thousand, which is twenty-five runs, you can get you get the ship. But I'll show you what this event looks like. So you get the event, you activate your floater, you fly up, and little arrows will show up on your mini map, and you go fly to them and do the do the little obstacle course thing that they have for them. Uh, there are more expensive floaters that are faster. This is the basic floater at, b at basic speed. Uh, there, this is only 50, fa 50 favor. The top end ones are like a thousand, if I remember correctly. We'll I'll, we'll look at the pricing in a minute. But I want to show you guys the actual thing. So, you're looking for these gates, and it's kind of like a sort of a flying slalom course, except pretty easy. You basically just fly down the thing and fly through the gates. It's not hard, it's pretty easy, and, you know, it's a lot like the, uh, 
the winter event, you know, the winter event sort of one is somewhat similar, but while I overall like the winter event better than I like the summer event, uh, the, the I prefer the floater thing to the winter, the the ice race. I just don't like I don't like having to, I don't like the way they implement ice physics basically. So here's the second slalom thing. So yeah, we're just going to fly through this. It's, again, it's kind of fun, chill, and laid back. It's a nice change of pace. Um, one thing other of note is the favor that I you, that you were in for doing this stuff for the various gear and stuff you can buy on the planet here. Uh, that can be bought and sold on the exchange. So... There's the last one up there. Um... Which means that, you know, once you get the gear you want from this, gear and cosmetics you want from doing the event, you can keep running it and get a collection of the uh, the favor and sell it on the exchange for a bit of EC. It's another way to make EC that doesn't require, like, any actual investment of actual money. Which is kind of nice, actually. It's not a great way to make EC, but it's a way. It's not a time... It, it's not super time efficient, I don't think, but... It's kind of... You know, chill, laid back thing. It's a, it's you know, it's a change of pace, different way to do it. We'll take a look at how much is going for in the exchange in a minute once I complete this. So the nice thing I'm going to show you now is once you've completed the thing, the easiest way to get back to the turn is to click on site to site tan transport, beam to resort. No matter where you are on the island. It beams you back here. Oh. I got my 20 favor there. Alright. So, this dude sells floaters and nothing else. This dude over here sells everything. This chick here just is a, it's a tailor, which is cool. You can also access the store from the reputation tab once you've unlocked it. Summer event right there. But we're going to do it through this dude here because it's sort of more fun. So, uh, summer event stuff. Uh, so they've got some new emotes. Uh, some dances, some baseball-themed ones, auto Starship audio emotes, which are new and different, uh, apparently. Organ, okay, so it's organ, it's baseball game or organ music, the charge warm-up ball game. Okay, uh, they've got some food stuffs so you can get with favor. That gives you bonus damage for 180 seconds, 1,800 seconds. Uh, That's like 30 minutes. That's not bad, actually. Nice some shield cap. Some, yeah. It's all fun. Fun stuff. Oh, these are actually devices. That's kind of cool. Uh, bonus hit points. Bonus all damage plus five kit performance for about an hour. I might grab one of these. Do these conflict with? If these don't conflict with uh, triples, that actually might be really good, and they're cheap. And the Jipper's the best of the bunch. It's only eight favor. I'm gonna, I'm thinking about. I'm gonna buy it actually. Yeah, we're 
end at that. Uh, oh, that one's just, just kid performance. That's kind of nice, actually. But I think I'm going to grab the jipper. Sweet. All right, so there's some outfit stuff. You can right-click on to see what they look like. Uh, there's actually outfit combo. I actually am planning on picking up for this character, but uh, we'll go into that later. Uh, there are kit modules. Uh, Sandstorm generator, I think, is relatively new. Uh, it's an engineering one. There are training manuals to get for your... Uh, so there's Sandstorm generator, hurricane turret, training manuals for your ground crew. Molten Terrain, Cyclonic Generator, Seismic Agitation Field, Seismic Agitation, Sonic Disruption, that's science, Virulent Dark Matter Cloud, interesting. That's actually a really good debuff, holy cow, I might have to pick that up for my science officers, my main account. Graviton Spike's a great tactical officer ability. Worth picking up. Cross Grenade's okay. Magnetic Deployment, I don't know that one. That one's relatively new. Uh, there's some Vanity Starship Shields, which can make your shields look a little bit different. They're kind of fun. Uh, various van Vanity Pets, they're fun, they're fun silly things. Um, Tropical Bird Egg. You can get a Baseball, which is another device that can do some stuff. Um, is ready to catch mode. So basically, basically it applies the ready to catch to self. Target player is ready to catch mode active. Both you and the youth. If target player is ready to catch mode active, both you and them get plus 1.5 da bonus all damage and plus 5 all damage is rating for 10 minutes. That's not bad. Neat little item. Uh, there's stuff you can buy with gold press latinum, mostly sunglasses. Floaters, that's the thing I showed you before. Low end ones are 50. The top end ones are 1,000. Power boards, that's for the power board races. Uh, low end are, you can rent them. Low end ones are 50, and like the floaters, they scale up to a bit more, 1,500 for these. And more costume stuff, swimwear. So yeah, I'm gonna. I'm planning on putting together an outfit for her for beach wear. I'm just not sure what I want to do yet exactly. I've got a. F it's for this character. I'm thinking probably the the beach shorts plus a Hawaiian shirt. Cause I think it'll be fun. But uh, yeah, that's the stuff you can get here on Riza. Uh, there are a bunch of different events you can do. They're all pretty safely self-explanatory. Uh, we might do something a little bit later on, I, but there's other stuff I want to do before we get to that that's actually I want to front load onto the video. So, we're going to go back to Seoul so I can look at the ship manager there. So yeah, I've been taking advantage of... The other thing I've been taking... I took advantage of was uh, when they did the... Uh, they did the Phoenix lockbox... The Phoenix bot... The Phoenix box uh, event um, a while back. So I burnt a bunch of Dilithium on that uh, also. Uh, so I could get Phoenix upgrades. And... Uh, Welcome, Scott. I did the not... Zinkethi operating... I did not want to... Why am I here? Did I misclick? I think I misclicked. I misclicked. I did not want to go here.
Oops. <laughs> oh well. Very little on this sector is known to yeah. us or our allies. We have recently established contact with I the went to the Zen I went to the Zenkethi battle zone by accident. The first Federation. They are somewhat enigmatic, but encouraging. Especially where Tranya is concerned. So yeah. Um Right. So I've upgraded all my stuff to either Mark 14 or 15. Uh, some things I went to 15 on because it was cheap enough to do it. Um, I, I'm not going to upgrade this stuff to 15s. I upgraded my defl secondary deflector to 15 because that was uh, something I'm definitively going to keep. Um, Shut up. I'm trying to go around it. There we go. So, uh, yeah. I'm saving up right now, um lithium and uh, gamma marks to get a set of the the gamma quadrant uh, deflector I want I want to do that one on this ship for this character for this character so I'm saving that up right now um, I want to see I want to see if those two stack if we can test that when we get to ESD um But yeah, uh, so I'm saving up Gamma Marks and uh, Geranium Carapace Fragments. I need six more Carapace Fragments before I can actually, uh, before I'm, I'm there. And once I, then I need enough dil Dilithium to get there. Um, but you know, you'll notice I've gotten basically all my reps to Tier 5, which is nice. I've not gotten the new one, which is Discovery Legends. I've not gotten that to 5 yet, obviously. Uh, but we're also going to do the Universal Endeavor here uh, to get the Academy Lore mission. Repeating whether I want to try to get the polar damage one or not. I was gonna slipstream, but we're actually just about there, so not worth wasting the slipstream on that. So yeah, we've got most of our gear up to 14 or 15, roughly in that category. 14 is basically where I want to get it before I decide exactly what I, how what kind of gear I want to actually use on what ship. Uh, given how this character operates, I kind of want to get some sort of... Uh, my main gear I want to use, I want to be have it at least be able to proc damage over time effects. Um, Anti-Proton doesn't do that. No, I'm, just, I'm a temporal spec and I get some advantages from DOT, having DOT effects on my enemies. So... I'm thinking about that. Uh, possibly Romulan Plasma. Uh, I would go with Agony Phasers, but they're really expensive, if I remember correctly. I'll take a look. Phaser would be the damage type of choice I'd go with right now, for the simple reason that there's a lot of reasonably affordable consoles and other gear that can be used to up phaser damage. Though I don't have the best piece of equipment for that, which is the uh, the Domino console you got that they had tied to the uh, Bajoran Interceptor, which you can't get now because that was, in a, that was, the, that was last year's anniversary event. C'est la vie. So... Actually, before we go ch to look at the ships, we're gonna. I want to take one quick look because I was hanging on to uh, various pieces of Romulan plasma weaponry that I got as I was leveling up the rep for Rom for leveling up the Romulan uh, new Rom Romulan Republic rep. Um, the other thing I need to save up for is uh, ch Chingy. Um, Blanking on the term all of a sudden. Hang on. 
I need to save up enough to lithium also to buy a share at account bank. Um, so I've got two Romulan Plasma beam rays. I've got a bunch of Romulan Plasma cannons, which are not what I want. Uh, dual beam, I've got dual, dual beam banks too, which are great, but again, for the ships I'm flying, I'd rather have beam rays, I think. Not sure. At any rate, um... So yeah, I'm probably gonna be... I, yeah, I gotta save up the lithium for that. Oh right, I wanted to look at agony phasers. How much are agony phasers going for? Oh, this is gonna cause me pain. Ship equipment, ship weapons, so I don't look at the agony phaser ground weapons. Oh god, they're like a million each. Ow. Like the cheapest beam array is 1.8 million. Ow. It hurts. It hurts us. I mean, it's a f technically affordable. I might be able to get it, but oh. All right. Well, good to know. All right. So that's something to think about. Basically, I, I, I'm going to look into the various DO, things that have DOT effects. Romplas might be my best bet. Um, right. But the, now we're the thing I want to talk about now, and this is the big thing, is I want to talk about. Um, so you'll see down here we've got uh, go to events coupon progress token. I'm actually almost there. The next time they run, they do an event that gives out cu coupon uh, vouchers, the whatever they're forget their, whatever they're called. Uh, I'm, I will get there pretty fast. Um, the reward is 100% discount coupon tier six ship. This coupon allows you to claim a single tier six starship in the Zen store. So you have to get the Zen store. You can click on the Zen store button attached to the bottom of your mini map. Some exclusions may apply. Ships found in the new item section of the Zen store cannot be purchased with this coupon. So currently, if I got the thing, I could not buy uh, the Burren Command Dreadnought or the Koj Command Dreadnought. And that's it right now. Um, and I don't think I'd buy either of those for this account right now. They're fine. They're perfectly okay ships. Um, It's traits okay. I mean, it's a fine trait, honestly. Um, that's actually a better trait than I thought it was. I'm reading it now. Basically, all traits allow to activate a command bridge off ability or auxiliary power to structural integrity field, which is actually a good, useful heal. So I guess if you're flying cruisers, which is where I'd run ox to structural integrity field. Uh, it basically gives you your team and hangar pets a buff to team hull capacity, regeneration, bridge officer cooldown speed, that's the good bit, flight speed and turn rate for short duration. That's cute. That's a solid trait. That's a decent support trait. I actually consider that. I have the brawn on my main account, but... So, at any rate. You can't buy stuff from there. Uh, it's easier to look at the fed stuff just through here, so through, the, through this thing. So that's what we're going to do. So these are all the ships that a fed character can theoretically buy and use. Goes down to here. There are a couple of ships that are not in here that are things on my list that I'm considering, but they're not available to a straight fed, fed, fed player. So, all right. So the first thing that you have to think about is, um, as I said earlier on, is do you want to focus entirely on just making your one character as effective as possible? for the, the thing that you want them to do? Or do you want to have the alts you make, and you're going to be making alts, and uh, I have been holding off on doing that for exactly this reason, because I haven't decided how I want to handle this on this account yet. But do you want your alts to be, you know, to have full flexibility and play as, you want to basically, do you want, how, how playable do you want your alts to be? Like, do you really, are they really just there to be, uh, there to help you farm dilithium and energy credits and stuff? and do things on events and such, or do you want them to be fully, some of the, do you want some of them to be fully functional characters? That's an, that's the dilemma you have to think about. Um, 
I haven't decided that yet on this account. And I don't have to really until I complete the coupon, in my opinion. That's sort of what I'm holding off. One of the reasons I'm holding off. But I'm debating. Um, so let's say I'm focusing on making this character, my, this character as effective as possible with her ship of choice. Currently, she the, her best ship right now that she has currently is the Vulcan science ship. So if I wanted to focus on being really good at fly, doing science stuff, um, there are some better options. And I'll mention those as I'm going through these. Um, so the option might be to buy a science ship. Uh, that's a fairly logical thing. Because a lot of the science ships have good traits that affect science, abil uh, affect science abilities. Some of them don't. We'll go through a couple of these and look at them. Uh, in fact, let's look at the science ships just off the bat here. We can just... Now, the nice thing about the reason I'm looking at it through here is so that I can actually filter stuff a bit more than the, sto the store directly does. So, the Scryer is a solid ship. It has intel abilities, some of which are very good and do work well for science ships. Um, after reaching level 5 in your science Scryer intel vessel, you unlock emitter synergy. While straight slotted, each time you use a tactical or intelligence bridge officer ability, you gain a small bonus to exotic damage and shield healing. Okay. Stacks up to three times. That's kind of cool. Uh, also, this is a science ship. This is a science ship that has a cloaking device. Um, it's got a nice base turn rate. Um, it's got Lieutenant Tactical, Lieutenant Commander Engineering. Lieutenant Commander Science, Commander Science Intel, and Ensign Universal. Um, the thing you'll find is, depending on how you want to operate your science ship, you do want some intel. Uh, sorry, some tactical seating. I like having Lieutenant Commander uh, Engineering on basically any ship I have, but I want at least three engineering slots as a general rule of thumb. I want something for... Um, a hull heal from engineering, aux to shields, and then aux whatever my primary damage thing, be it energy weapons or auxiliary, which is what uh, science ships use. Uh, so ideally I want three slots, but you can live on just two. The ship has three natives, so. Uh, the experimental science vessel, uh, this ship is interesting. Lieutenant Tactical, Lieutenant Commander so Tactical. So it's actually got a fair bit of tactical seating, which is interesting. Uh, Lieutenant Engineering, Lieutenant Science Intelligence, and Commander Science. This has got a good amount of science abilities, a lot of tactical seating, a lot. Um, uh, what's its trait, though, which is the interesting question. Is the trait good? Uh, where's the trait? There we go. Uh, we'll unlock the Radiant Nanite Cloud Starship Trait. While this trait is slaughtered, all it causes the Captain ability and Bridge Officer ability heal, hull heals to heal for an additional 50% of the initial healing value over 4 seconds to all allies within 3 kilometers of the healed target, self or ally. Which is kind of fun. It's a neat trait. Um, uh, the Long Range Science Vessel. Um, this is the It's Voyager, basically. It's a tier 6 version of Voyager. Um, I'm not going to go through the bridge officer layouts, all these. You can look at them yourself and figure out figure out whether they fit what you want or not. Um, I forget what this one's trait is. This one's trait is Ablet of Field Projector. All your shields will probably provide a small measure of temporary hull hit points to the target. Okay, so that the nice thing about that is that's sort of a generically useful trait. It's nice for a lot of, for more than just science ships. It's not great for science ships, but it's not bad. Um, temporal Science Vessel. This thing's okay. Um, I'm not going to go through the details on all of these, as I said. Uh, the big winners for science ships are the Temporal Multi-Mission Science Vessel. This thing is a really, really good science ship. And it is cross-faction, so no matter what faction your character, character you, you what, what, what if you want to make additional characters, no matter what faction they are, they can use this thing. Which is nice. Um, it's trait, basically, uh, using an exotic damage ability will provide a small bonus to armor pen. That's, it's just a nice ability. It's good. It makes your, it means that your science abilities and your weapons will burn through the enemy's hull faster. Um. Lieutenant Tactical, 
Temp Ops Tactical, then Commander Engineering, Ensign Science, Commander Science Temporal Ops, Lieutenant Commander's Universal. So you've got a bunch of flexibility with this thing. It's a really good ship. Uh, that's a solid ship. All right, these are, if I remember correctly, are really good science ships. Uh, I believe the... I believe this is the one that most... I believe that the uh, the Palatine is the one that most people recommend. I forget. Um, uh, the big thing is that it's got what's his trait? Its trait is well, activating beam overload, beam fire at will, can rapid fire, can scatter volley, or any substance targeting ability will cause your starship to deploy a heavy tachyon mine behind your ship. This large mine is easier for your enemies to see than smaller mines, but has a larger tracking distance and a larger area of effect. The trait's not great, but it does a lot. It can do a lot of damage and do some cool stuff. So, let's um, camera tactical, lieutenant engineering, commander science, Ensign universal, lieutenant commander universal temporal ops. That's actually a nice set, nice mix of bridge officer abilities. So this is a really good ship. These are all, from what I remember, are all considered very good ships. Uh, pick the one that fits you best, I guess, of these, if you wanted one of these. Um, this modifies your charge... Uh, charge activating charge particle burst will do some other stuff. Basically what it does is that when you hit someone with uh, charge particle burst, they will proc a less powerful charge particle burst off of them, causing a chain reaction, which is kind of neat. Uh, the strategic one. This is the engineering one. Uh, so particle shielding. While well, it's trade slotted out to an engineering team, science team, or tactical team, will provide a buff to all damage resistance rating. Effective targets will also gain an equal amount of damage resistance rating to all exotic abilities. That's actually really cool. That's a nice generic trait, which is kind of fun. Um, those are all good. Uh, the Cardassian Intel Science Dreadnought. Um, this is no the nice the nice thing. That this one is also cross faction. It's a dreadnought, so it's big. It's fairly beefy for a science ship. Lieutenant Commander Tactical, Lieutenant Engineering, Lieutenant Commander Science, Commander Science Intel, Universal Ensign Universal Intelligence. So, solid mix of abilities. Got a cloaking device as an Intel ship. Uh, the console drops some, some support platforms. Um, it's giving a little fire. Its trait is you will unlock the photonic diversion starship trait. While straight is slaughter, activating jam targeting sensors or evade target lock with will create a photonic decoy at your target's, loca target's location. This decoy will draw fire while attack while attacking spar wave disruptor beam arrays and photon torpedoes that have a constant feedback pulse effect. So that's kind of fun. That is a neat trait. It's tied to a really sort of limited use. It's two abilities that are fairly limited in usefulness, but it's a powerful effect. So, and it's a solid ship. So that's another possibility uh, if you're looking at science vessels. Um, so, if I wanted to focus on science vessels, those are things I would consider. Um, but I would also consider... Um, no, not those. Is there a cruiser, I guess? It is not technically a science ship, but it's got a trait that makes science ships better. Where are you? There you are. The Temporal Dreadnought Cruiser. There are, two, there are two ships in here that have traits that are really good for science ships. Uh, this one, uh, its trait, you unlock the exotic modulation starship trait while straight slotted. Using directed energy modulation or any temporal operative ability will provide a large boost to exotic damage for a short time. Which is very nice. 
but it requires basically either you'd be running direct directed energy modulation, which is not a bad trait, not a bad skill ability, honestly, or have temporal abilities. So the other one is actually it's an escort. Is the Chimish and Dorian Chimish pilot escort. Even tier here at level 5 in your Andorian Chemish will um, unlock the improved Gravity World Starship trait. While tra tra trying to slaughter, your Gravity Well anomalies last twice as long and recharge much faster. Additionally, the primary foe targeted by your Gravity Well activation will have their damage resistance rating reduced for the duration of the anomaly. So, the big thing about this basically is it brings the cooldown of the, your Gravity Well to be equal to the duration. So, basically, you throw a Gravity Well up, when it wears off, you'll be able to put up another Gravity Well. Really good trade if you're going for science ships. So this is another ship that's a distinct possibility if I want to focus on just this character. Because Gravel is sort of the big sort of uh, signature, uh, one of the big important abilities for uh, science ships. Because it's the one that pulls it, pulls things together so that you can group them up for your other space magic abilities. Um, that said, there are some other ships that we are looking at um, that are a possibility. If I want to go more general just for... Uh, General ability, general things that would be useful for multiple ships on my account, and I want to focus just on Fed side. So I'm looking at Fed ships, so things that not everyone else would use. Uh, the Phantom Intel Escort is a great escort, and it has a phenomenal trait. Uh, reciprocity is just a really good, useful trait, just in general. Um, the Tactical Command Battle Cruiser is a really sturdy, tanky ship. Uh, its trait all hands on deck is actually very handy for science ships, so this would actually be a nice, nice. It's it's a good it's a good trait in general, but this would be very handy for this character of science ship also. So that's a distinct possibility. Um, if you like pilot escorts, the there all three of these are good. This one has a very nice trait for uh, just a general nice trait. The faster you're moving, you gain ar more armor pen. It's just really just a useful ability. Uh, that ability would be really good with the. Uh, um, Rising Corvette, actually. Plus, the Icarus actually looks kind of neat. I like this ship. It's a really good ship, though. Um, the Arbiter. It's almost impossible to go wrong with the Arbiter. Um, it's a phenomenal ship. It's very flexible, because you can do you can take advantage of the weapon loadout in a lot of different ways. Uh, its trait is just generically good for almost everything. Basically, if you use energy weapons, its trait's good. Basically, if you, you when you use emergency power to weapons, it reduces the it, redu it gives you a firing cycle boost, so your energy weapons fire more often, and they cost less power. It's just a great trait, and it's a really good ship. Like it's hard, it's almost impossible to go wrong with that ship. Um, the star cruisers are all very good ships. Uh, the Science Star Cruiser is probably the best of the bunch, in my opinion, as an overall ship. Although the Tactical Star Cruiser is close behind. I'm not a big fan of the Operations one. Uh, the Science Star Cruiser also has a trait that'd be useful for, uh... Basically, while well, it's act slotted activating a control bridge officer ability will provide a boost to your exotic damage and projectile weapon damage for a short time. If I'm planning on focusing on this character, and this character alone, this is another ship I'm strongly considering. Because it just a generically, it's a, it's traits really good for science ships. And it's, uh, it's a really good ship on its own. So it means that even if I'm not, like, taking advantage of its trait, any character I have has a very good cruiser available to it. Uh, the tactical cruiser's ability is... Fire torpedo will provide a stack of supercharge. This will produce, provide a boost to directed energy weapons. Critical hit chance and critical severity for a short time. It's a good, it's a fun trait. It, la it means that if you're actually using both torpedoes and beam energy weapons, it's actually somewhat effective. Uh, also, it's just a really, really solid ship. Like these, you, these two are both very good, and you really can't go wrong with either of them. They've got handy consoles also. Uh, I like the temporal battle cruiser a lot. It's a good ship, but don't buy it with the coupon. Uh, save up enough to let him to buy the Zen and buy it through the buy buy it through the Zen store, because uh, go to starter packs. The temporal agent starter pack is two thousand Zen, and with it you get the tier one Constitution, uh, which is 
a fun little thing to have, and it gives you the retro phasers, which are fun. And it gives you the tier six, the tier six temporal battle cruiser. You get like a bunch. You get a bridge, a, a, a bridge officer who's kind of fun. Uh, a tier one ship with a useful weapon that you can pull off of it and get multiples of that easily, and a good tier six ship. This is a really good buy for two thousand zen, and that's actually very achievable with saving up uh, saving up the lithium. Don't buy it for. Don't waste your coupon on this. That's, I yeah. We already talked about the Temporal Dreadnought, we already talked about the Multi-Mission Explorer. Uh, the Temporal Raider is one of the best Raiders in the game. It's good, but I not this is not what I would recommend. Um, not for what I'm talking about right now, which is you know, generically useful for if you're playing focusing on fed characters. Um, uh, the Intel Assault Cruiser is fine, uh, but it's not one of the ones I would recommend. Okay. This ship, the... Is that the right one? The this is the op this is the the engineering focus one the operations one I don't remember what the name of this one is this one is uh, has the best trait of the bunch of the uh, miracle worker cruisers I hate the way all of these look but this tr this the this ship has a great trait I don't like his bridge officer layout unfortunately but it only has lieutenant tactical miracle worker lieutenant commander engineering commander engineering temporal uh, miracle worker. Ensign Science, and then Lieutenant Commander Universal. The problem I have with it is you can't get much science ability, much in the way of science, and and tactical. Like, it's if it had one, if that was a Lieutenant Science seat, I would be much happier with this ship. So then I could shove that into tactical and be completely happy. I would probably end up shoving the tactical and basically living with without having science team and just hazard emitters, which would maybe sort of wince, but it's doable. Um... The tactical ship is a much better ship. For exactly that reason. It's got Lieutenant Science, and that means you can shove this Lieutenant Commander to tactical and be happy. And it has Lieutenant Commander tactical already, so you actually get a really nice tactical a suite of tactical abilities, good engineering, and enough science to be functional. To be fully functional, in my opinion. But its trait's not as good. Its trait's good, don't get me wrong. Um... Basically, this one basically means that when you activate it, once it, you act, you're the the after while receive while slotted receiving damage while beam fire at will is active, will extend the duration of beam fire at will by a small amount once per second. Total max duration cannot exceed an additional 15 seconds. So basically, if you as you're firing fire at will, if you take damage, it lasts longer. It's a good one. Uh, I the Chimesh is just good. All three of the Andorian pilot escorts are good if that's what you really want. I don't know if they're generically useful. Uh, if you want to get a cross faction ship. But this is not what I'm talking about now, but... Oh, we'll come back to this, actually. Uh, right. The Narenda. This is probably the cruiser I would get if I was... If I am if I do just want to focus Fed side entirely on this count. This is probably the ship I'm picking up. It is a really good cruiser. Just It's just a rock-solid cruiser. There's nothing wrong with this ship. You know, Ensign Tactical, Lieutenant Command... Lieutenant Tactical... Commander's Engineering Temporal, Lieutenant Commander Science, Lieutenant Commander Universal. It's really, really good. Very flexible. I could go Science Heavy, I could go Tactical Heavy, I could go Engineering Heavy. All three of those are viable on this ship. Uh, it's got a nice set of... Con its consoles are good enough that you can basically go with Science Heavy and not be completely disastrous. You're never going to be a science ship, but you can... You can play one on TV. <laughs> uh... The big thing about this ship is its trait. History will remember. Prolonged conflict... Be so basically, as time works... Blah, 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 with this trait slotted, each foe that it damages you will grant you a stack of history will remember, which in parts increase damage, hull capacity, and hull regeneration. Each hull only counts for a single stack, so no matter how many times they damage you, each attack will last until you leave the map. And you can have 30 stacks maximum. So, basically, as you take damage, you basically become harder to kill and do more damage. It is a really just generically good trait. It is really good. This is one of the best... It's just a good ship with a good useful trait. The trait's best on a tank, but it's just generally good. Like, I... I love the Narenda. Plus it, look, plus it looks pretty sweet. I love the... It's, it's a Tier 6 Ambassador. I love the Ambassador. Uh, the... The Europa is a solid, solid ship. I, I don't know if it's something I would recommend as a sort of generic thing. Uh, 
It's trade. It's trade is, is a decent, a decent one for basically anybody. Uh, the Gagara is a good ship. I've flown this one. I've not flown the Europa, so I can't speak on that one, unfortunately. It's a little unwieldy. The Shran is a. If you want to focus on escorts, this is a really good escort to pick up. Um, like if you want to go just just focus on escorts, a fed on fed escorts, this is a really good ship. It's another good pick. Uh, and I mentioned the Baron earlier. It's fine. All right, if you want to go um, focus on not just on feds, uh, there are a couple of other options you can go with. You at that point you really want to. You're I would if you're going to go with non feds. There are two things. So if you go non, if you go if you're going with if you're going to want to build characters that are not Federation, uh, you, what you can't that are not just feds. You could go and make Gemadar characters and Ro, Gemadar characters and Romulan characters who align with Starfleet. Because they those both those sub factions have to pick either star to align with either Starfleet or the Klingon KDF. Um, so if you're going with Fed aligned Fed aligned Jem'Hadar or Fed aligned Romulans, you can you could just buy Fed ships and then they can use them, or you can also buy uh, either the any of the Cardassian ships. Of those, I think the Intel Flight Deck Cruiser is the most flexible. Uh, its trade is more the most generically useful of the bunch, and it is. I think it's the most flexible ship of the bunch. The Intel Escort's also got a good generically good trait. Um, it's a bit more random. I think the ship's a little squishy and fragile, but it's a good es It's a solid escort. It's just I, not my favorite escort that I've flown. Uh, the other option, and if you're going like across totally cross faction. Wrong thing. Uh, Zen store. Ships. The other option is make your second character a Gemadar, level them up, and get them one of the Gemadar ships from from the store. All of these ships have an additional tier six level of mastery. If you hit that, it becomes available to all your characters, no matter what faction. Um, and of these, I think the Vanguard, not the, the sorry, the Vanguard warship is the be is the best ship here. And has the is the most sort of generically useful. I think it's the best ship here. I, though I will say the heavy raider is a very good raider. Um, again, if you are pl if you're planning and focusing on escorts and raiders, this ship's trait's actually very good. If you're not, it's not a good trait. It's basically it's a it's a trait where you get bonus get bonuses when you're attacking the enemy from behind. Uh, the dreadnought cruiser. Um, Activating engineering team, science team, and tactical team will apply less aversion of these abilities on nearby enemies. The nearby allies, I mean. It's a nice trait. It's not amazing. But it's generically useful. It's good if you're playing in teams. Uh, and the the Dreadnought Cruiser is a solid ship. Like, I can't argue with this. The Vanguard Carrier. This is a, an excellent carrier. Uh, it's a really good carrier. If you like carriers, if you like the idea of a carrier, they're a lot of fun. The one drawback to that is the best trait for carriers is monstrously expensive. I'll go look that up in a second. Um, its trait, uh, dampen energy signatures when its trait is slotted, activation of mask energy signature or any intel bridge officer ability will grant your hangar pets a damage buff, a large amount of stealth, as well as significantly reducing their threat generation for a short time. The hangar pets do not break their stealth even when they're attacking. That is actually a really cool ability. It makes your hangar pets a lot better, and you can, I think it, it means that you can get away without getting the trait I'm, I'm going to go look at in a second, but you really want that trait. You really want that trait. That said, for a full carrier, this is actually a really cool ship. I rec I do I do think it's good. Um, and it's a good, it's a it's a good ship. So like any of those Gemadar ships are, are fine picks. Um, I again I haven't decided how I want to do this yet. Um, so let's back this up. All right. Alright, this is the Starship Trade Scramble Fighters. It is currently going for 250 million EC. It is hideously expensive. It's hard to get. Um, what it does is insane. When you activate the, the, the launch pets button, um, even if you've got max hangar, even if you've got max fighters out currently from that hangar, you can push the button anyways to give your all your hangar pets, all of them, 5 seconds of damage immunity, 25% bonus damage for 5 seconds and heal them for 50% of their max hull. This is 
the best trait you can have on a carrier. It is incredible. It is a huge, huge, huge thing. Unfortunately, it goes for a metric boatload of EC right now, and there aren't many of them in the exchange. I wish it was cheaper. There was a little while when it was going for, like, under 100 mil, and it was affordable then. Not really now. I don't recommend players for, uh, carriers for free-to-play accounts. I really don't. For, exact, for that reason right there. I think if you want to, even if you want to do a free-to-play account and uh, and you want to do that, if you and you want to play a carrier, Captain, you have to go, you have to build a gem at our character and get work on that coupon stuff, the coupon uh, event thing every time it comes up so that you can get get a free tier six ship from your store and get the carrier. That tra that trait will make, will give, will increase, that trait will be a huge help because it'll increase the survivability of your hangar pets and give them a damage boost. Uh, that is the. W I I can't I can't say that enough. That is exact. That is the. That is your best bet. Um. So yeah, those are the things I would recommend the most. Um. I don't know. I haven't decided yet exactly how I'm handling it, handling this on this character. Um. I just haven't decided yet. Um, it's not an easy decision, to be completely honest. Okay, I'm going to go to this Universal Endeavor here before I forget. Um, but those are the ships I'm looking at. Um, right now, I'm sort of... Oh, as an aside, if you want to just focus on a KDF character, the KDF equivalents of the ships I was talking about, because there are KDF equivalents of them, are what you're looking for. Uh, Academy Lore Mission. I think those start in here, if I remember correctly. I think it's this dude here. Yep. All right, cool. I completed my endeavor. A little bit more to lithium, some energy credits, some R&D materials. Not bad. Ah, that tasks me. I don't have a reroll token for right, for right now, unfortunately, I don't think. Yeah, I'm out of reroll tokens, damn. Let's go back to space stocks for a second. So yeah, that's what I'm. Th that's sort of where we're thinking right now. Um, uh, yeah, I think that's basically you know. So um, yeah, I'm not sure exactly what my recommendation would be. For that, I think the the most efficient thing you can probably do, honestly, is focus everything into one character. Uh, make your alt spacey just support things for this character, and don't worry about that. Um, I'm kind of leaning towards that, honestly. Um, and if I do that, uh, I might still make a Gemidar character and or or Federation line Rom. Uh, and in that case, I will still... I, they can use fed ships, so... It, it, it'd feel a little bit wrong for that, but you know what? I don't care. Uh, I can't afford to care on a free-to-play account, is what it boils down to. Um, so yeah, I'm leaning towards basically focusing everything into this character, making this character as effective as possible. Which means... Um, My best ship, my sort of, you know, I'm gonna, I, I'm sort of, sort of, I'm intrigued by the idea of doing the engineer in a science ship thing. Uh, I am leaning towards right now to picking up the. Uh, my gut feeling is either the Narenda or the science uh, star cruiser, are my gut feelings. The Chemesh is another possibility for the improved grab well. 
Uh, Mike, what I might do is I might go with the, the excuse me. I might go with the uh, with one of the with the science star cruiser now, and the next time I can get a, a tier six ship, uh, if they do another coupon thing again, which I'm hoping they'll do because I think it's a really good idea and it's, I think it's a program they should keep going, uh, because it really you know it's a reason to keep playing and do stuff as a free to play player. Like that's a real incentive. That's a big thumbs up. That's like the best program they've come up with. Um, uh, I would seriously consider picking up the, uh, the, I'd probably pick up the Chimash with my second pick, which would give this character a tier six science ship, escort, and cruiser, which basically covers the three bases. Now, I also get an escort off of the, um, thingy, uh, when I buy the, uh, when I get the Rising Corvette. Um, but, and I'll see whether I like the Rising Corvette better than I like the Chimash. Um. I've flown the Chimash. I have it on my main account. Um, but yeah. So those are what I'm thinking about right now. Um, I should do some research to figure out what damage types actually proc DOT effects. Uh, because as I said, I'm temporal on this character primarily. Um, I have bridge officer slots. I'm saving those for... Um, I'm planning on, once I get enough fleet credits. I've got barely... I've got, I need enough fleet credits and, and uh, dilithium, but I need... It's fleet credits I mostly need. Uh, there's a, I've got a lot of things I need fleet credits for, so I need to actually... Actually, I can turn in some of those fleet marks now. That's good. Uh, I think we're working with slow game here. We're creeping on the point where I can actually consider picking up uh, con certain cons picking up uh, vulnerability locators, which are things I'm going to want. Um, the other thing that's going to cost a bunch of fleet credits are superior Romulan oper superior Romulan operative uh, officer bridge officers uh, that you can get from the embassy holdings in your fleet. Uh, they're really good. I'll show you know what I'll show you where I'll show those to you now. So the uh, tactical consoles I'm talking about, the ones that basically increase uh, damage weapon, they give you bonus critical critical chance and uh, bonus damage with a particular dam weapon type. Those you get through the, um, the holding of the Dyson Sphere, the uh, Spire. Romulus. I could transwarp there, but I'm going to just fly. So yeah, um... Yeah, I'm getting close to be able to pick up the, uh, the Gamma, the Gamma set, which actually is a good, is a good set for science ships, which is the other reason I'm considering focusing on this character, primarily. Um... That's what I'm leaning towards. So, but as if you got for the viewers, let me know what you uh, what you think would be most useful as for you guys for this. Because part of the reason I'm doing this is a sort of a free to play guide. Um, as I said, I think focusing on one character and then using your alts to support them is the most efficient way to do stuff as a free to play player. But I thoroughly understand wanting to have fully playable alts. So, let me know what you guys think would be the sort of best way to do this for this thing. I'm curious to see what it is. I'm leaning towards doing the focusing on just focusing on this character thing. But uh, let me know what you guys think. I'm curious. Oh yeah, that's a new ability they added. They added a new ability called Relocate Mines, which is a one, one minute cooldown. It teleports all the mines you've laid to uh, near your turn target. It makes mines at least semi-useful, but I'm not running mines at the moment, so that can go off my bars. And I don't care about... I know we can put that up here. Alright. We're in 
Romulan space, beam to embassy. There is two things in the embassy, one of which used to be a, sort of a meta thing to pick up, but is sort of has fallen into disfavor. Um, because it got nerfed into the into the ground, which I'll show you in a minute. But we go to ops. I think it's this way, actually. I think it's this console here. Yep, brokers and bridge officers. All right, so I can afford one of them right now. It's this category here. The blue tier. This right here, the 80,000 fleet credit uh, Romulan male tactical officer candidate. They get superior Romulan operative, which gives, which when they're in the when they're in a bridge officer seat, if they're if they're seated on your ship, they give you plus crit and plus crit severity. Also reduce cloak cooldown, but that really completely irrelevant. It's the first bit, the bonus crit and crit severity, huge. It's really good. Uh, but unfortunately, I believe those are the only ones that have uh, superior Romulan operative. We'll just scroll through here and double check. Uh, they have subterfuge. Subterfuge. Subterfuge is basically use is basically is useless unless you actually have a cloak. So he's got Romulan operative, which is not as good, but it's actually you know if you can't if you really can't afford the eighty thousand one. Um, Romulan operative. Romulan operative. Subterfuge. Subterfuge. 80k, superior subterfuge, regular subterfuge, superior Romulan operative. Okay, the female one actually has Romulan operative, so for the tactical, I guess. Eh. You want superior Romulan, you, subterfuge, superior subterfuge, hooray. Superior subterfuge, See if anybody other than the attack officers have uh have superior Roman operative, and I don't think so. Yeah, Romulan operatives only shows up on the attack officers, so that is who you're looking for from here. And you're specifically looking for this dude right here. He's the one with, with superior Roman operative. Eight, they're 80,000 fleet credits and 17,000 to lithium. They're really good, but get the get the consoles first, which we'll we'll go look at in a second. Um, down the shuttle bay though first. Uh, there's another console. There's a console that's sold here. That used to be very in meta and is not anymore, unfortunately. The plasma generating uh, weapon signature nullifiers and amplifiers. What these do is they, uh, the big thing about them is the weapon signature nullifier and amplifier. Either they reduce your threat or they increase your threat generation. So either they make you less, attract less aggro or attract more aggro. So they're, they might still be useful for tanks, but there are better things to get. The thing is they also have usually some sort of bonus effect like improved control, your control abilities. Improve stealth, improve EPG, improve perception, improve drain, improve shield healing. The plasma gener plasma infused, the plasma generating ones were the ones that were in the meta at the time for a little while. The reason being is they used to. Okay, so what they do is they add plasma explosion proc to uh, energy weapons, so they give a all your energy weapons get a chance to proc a explosion of plasma of exotic plasma damage, basically. We buy these clouds of plasma that do damage over time and such. Um, the big thing is they used to that buff right there, to the plus eight point four percent plasma based exotic damage, that didn't used to be exotic damage. That used to be just plasma damage. That's why these used to be so strong. Now it only plays the plasma based exotic damage, and there isn't a lot of that. So these are m no are not really in meta right now, but if you really want to generate or reduce threat, they're not completely useless. Eh. 
I don't recommend them. All right. Back to the lobby. Unfortunately, it's one of the places that you can't transwarp to the thing I want to go to immediately on your own. But yeah, so the uh, vulnerability locators are at the spire. Um, those are one of the consoles you're going to want. Um, I think the the research lab has the uh, s the secondary deflectors that I, one of them which I'm using right here, the strategic deteriorating secondary deflector. And I think the research lab also has like the the special science consoles, which are also very good. Those, are those those might be craftable? I don't know. No, those aren't the craftable one. That's the craftable one, the exotic pr pr particle field exciter. Yep. So yeah, uh, I would recommend you know. Anyways, yeah, you you can get the, you get the idea. Um. So yeah, uh, that is what sort of, you know, what's going on here. Um, why can't I just... What? Eh? Why is my uh, warp out of the system button gr grayed out? Alright, fuck it. I'll just transport the soul. Make it easy. I'm not sure what's going on there. I'm probably glitched. Oh, that's right. I wanted to check to see if I could get a cheap polar on weapon for ground at the space at the start at the uh, from the exchange. See how cheap they are. So yeah, um, uh, yeah, so that's what, that's sort of my thoughts on what ship to pick up with your free coupon thing, if you can get, if you can get it. I'm really hoping that they continue that, uh, that program. Uh, it's rubber banding a fair bit, that's not good. Um, what was I looking up? Oh yeah. Personal equipment, personal weapons, Polaron, and I want purple quality at least. I want either dual pistols, shotgun. Kind of want the dual pistols for funsies. Regular polar and dual pistols. Ah, those look fine. It's a bit pricier than I want to spend on them, but they actually look kind of fun. The Vodwar polar on weapons are actually kind of neat. So. Got a, I've got a couple of, uh, I actually have a few, uh, Phoenix upgrades left, so I'm just gonna see if I can... Let's just get this up to fi Mark 15 gear. Boop, 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 boop. 
Ba -ba -ba. That goes in the bank. That can go in the bank too for now. Anything else down here I want to stash in the bank? Go clear my inventory up here a little bit. Kind of want to do that, get that polar on damage on the ground out of the way. better. All right. Um, uh, where do I want to go to level this stuff? Uh, defeat gutter on the ground. Where am I in the storyline right now? Uh, quest stuff right now? Uh, I think I finished the Solanity Dyson Sphere, right? Yep, finished that. I had not started the I had not started Delta Quadrant yet. Okay. Drat. Okay. All right. I can't do the thing I wanted to do to get the ground bone get complete those two ground bits there. Um. Uh, you know what? We're just gonna do. We're just gonna join a random STF. See what we're gonna get. One of them. It might be a ground one. We'll do some random STFs until we get a ground one and some. That's not a good sign. That is not a good prize. Up oh, it went away. Okay. Game's being a bit laggy at the moment, which is subpar. But space. Okay. Azure Nebula. Fine. Whatever. Our time here is limited. Stay focused. Plan your attacks and save as many ships as possible. Every loss is critical for my people. Warbird is escaping.
Torbert is escaping. Boop, 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 boop. Warbird is escaping. All right, this is going to hurt me. I'm not positive I'm going to pull this off, but we're going to try. Out. That was rough. Our we failed. Dreadnought is escaping. We failed the goddamn objective because three people could not take down the ships guarding the. Oh my god. Uh, it happens. I'm not. Is yeah, just like oh my god, the two of us freed the. Uh, okay, whatever. I'm better built than the, than these guys are. That's fine. That happens. I got an APU cruiser. Okay, yeah, I can see why. There's some decent ships here, though. Hmm. Yeah, whatever. I'm not gonna worry about it. Honestly, we're we're doing fine overall. I'd like to have gotten the bonus objective, but you know what? C'est la vie. Why did you start shooting? Why did you start shooting them then, you bastards? over there, sure. I should not look at that Hapex over here. Screw that noise. Boop, 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 boop.
Warbird is escaping. Tour there will be good. They should be able to free that in the minute and a half. I should be, and I should be able to free that. So like this should work. We should get this bonus maybe, hopefully. Yeah, let's get at least one bonus. If not, say la vie. Not a huge deal, honestly. Oh, that was satisfying. I mean, we're just, it's normal content, so, like, you know. To be able to solo spawn that size, even on normal content, on a free-to-play account, feels pretty darn good. Oh my god, are they not going to free that one over there on in time? Are you fucking kidding? Thank god, okay, they barely got it. Oh. We got one of the bonuses, okay, I'm okay with that. We completed a bonus, fine. I love those chain reaction warp cores exploding. It's so satisfying. So very satisfying. In theory, I might build, like, as an alternate to the Gamma set, I might build the new, uh, the new Kara 2 piece for my, for the, if I do go with the Cruiser, that's probably what I'll end up doing. I'm sort of finishing off my, I've been meaning to get around to doing this for a while. Am I short one, Omega, am I short a... I think I'm short one Omega Shard, actually, so let's go see if we can get a... whatever the step down for that is. Actually, hang on a second, I need to look at what they are. I need... I need a sliver. I'm short one sliver, I think, if I remember correctly. Short one sliver. Let's see, price per unit. Actually, it doesn't matter, I'm just buying one. Alright. Yeah. 
Yep, I was short one. Yeah, let's build fragments. How much are fragments going for these days, actually? Ah, not bad, not bad. All right, so we'll make make a make a nice little nice small chunk of money on that. I'm not complaining. All right, all right. I need to get a, I need to hope to need to hope into a ground one for that, and I need gamma marks. Let's just join another random one. I like, to, I, you know, ra the random SKFs are nice for, especially for free to play accounts, because they've got increased rewards, which is nice. Hoping for a ground one, weirdly. I don't normally hope for ground. I'm not a big fan of I'm not, I'm not a big fan of ground comp, gr the ground SKFs, but, um,. Okay, yes, it looks like the Jipper and the, the gambling device stack. That's nice. Find out if it's ground in a minute, though. Get with Grethor. Okay. Not a big deal. I'm okay with this. Good mix of ships in here, it looks like. Phantom, Vengeance. I think that's the Tier 6 Galaxy, if I remember correctly. Yep, oh, it's... No, that's actually the Tier 5 one. Interesting. And a... Dis okay, so we got a Phantom, uh, a Tier 6 Defiant, a Vengeance, and the Tier 5 upgradable... Uh, Cruiser. Interesting. I really should change that to some, that, that intel ability to something else. Actually, I'm actually glad I picked that up. That's like the first time I've been really happy I picked up the, uh... That's the first time I'm really happy I picked up Intel Team. That was actually really handy. We actually did that very quickly. That was actually very nice. Alright, now we're the dull part of this.
hell is this gateway? Interesting. The troop transports from the star base are moving toward the planet. Radiation gateways have to close. Nice and closed. Hopefully they'll get that spawning the radiation gateway. They did. Nice. Dreadnought. All right, cool. Just gonna pop up right around here, actually, if I remember correctly. Ships are attacking the star base.
flat. Yes. Oh, that was satisfying. Our troops have landed. We will fight for Kronos. Thanks to your assistance, Kapla. Yeah, we did. We got both bon all the bonuses. Nice. Alright, sweet. That went well. Uh, oh, nice. Alright, excellent. Give me a ground one, damn it. It's so weird that I'm hoping for a ground SDF. Excellent. Those two stack. That's so good. Wait, are those one shot? Oh, the drinks are one shot. Okay. Well, that's reasonable, honestly. <clears throat> okay, the drinks are one shot. That's actually totally reasonable. I was meaning to think, though, I was thinking those might be a little bit too cheap for how good they are, but. I should get back to doing the main story stuff at some point, but, you know. So, yeah, I'm really torn, actually, what I want to get. If, you know, uh, yeah, I think, yeah. Mm. Our intelligence service. Romulan minefield? Okay. Operation. Okay, whatever. I'm, I'm happy. I'm, I'll do what I'm doing. I'm just, just keep hoping for a ground one. So I can actually get the stupid Polaron damage endeavor out of the way. Mm -hmm. I'd rather queue for them randomly so I get extra stuff for doing the type of SCF I don't like. Grumble. But I'm having fun with this, so like, I'm not objecting. I'm having fun. Like, Excellent work against those frigates. Just a few more to go. Warning. Ship is under attack.
They should be able to handle the rest of these on their own. <laughs> I cleared several of those on my own, so I feel no qualms about. Well. The job isn't over yet. Facility Beta is safe. Facility Gamma is up and running. Oh my god.
Very nice. First place. I'll take it. I will take the first place. Yes, please. Bwahaha, <sighs> bwahaha, bwahaha. Please give me a ground off the ground one, please. Even if it's the ground one I don't like. There's one ground one I really don't like that comes up fairly often. No, we got board disconnected. Okay. What on earth? Normally, like, a ground one comes up in here somewhere, like, often. Nobody's going for ground SDFs DFOs right now? Okay. I mean, I'm okay with that. But I mean, I'd have preferred... Uh, let's see where people are going. I'm waiting to see where people are going so I don't clog it up. So two over there. Fine, nobody seems to go no one seems to have gone over here. I'm more than happy to divvy it up. Oh god, we didn't divvy up right still. Ugh. Seriously, no one grabbed that probe over there? Oh.
Oh, the Undine are here. The Undine will destroy the disconnected Borg ships. Stop them. Dip, 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 dip. Doof 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 doof, power disconnected is long. And it's literally impossible to speed up. It's all on timers. The Vault have a ship designed to fight.
Oh my god, we let that thing, we let them blow up a sh Oh my god, they blew up a board cube. Ten's not great, but we'll deal with it. Hey, Andre, how you doing? Will not fall here. I will not allow it. You will be eliminated. The weak shall perish. Three dreadnoughts, but they're attacking one another. This is your chance. Uh, what ship am I using? I'll, I'm using a uh, the Vulcan. Oh god, I can't remember the name of it. Hang on a second. Let me. I'll look up in a second. <laughs> this was the anniversary event ship this year.
I'll look at it in one second. <laughs> Nice. Welcome to do so. Very cool, they Andrea. To do so. They are free to choose the uh, life they want. Some day the cooperative will oh, be able to fight the Starfleet. But at this time their numbers are too few. Uh, I should want the Dyson. I'm eventually going to want the one, one of the things from the Dyson thing. So, all right. Welcome. Leave map. Uh, so the ship I'm using. <laughs> Old Mill, so yes, thank you for showing up. Thank you for popping in. I am using the Vulcan to Pow Scout ship. It is the ship that they did for the winter, the uh, anniversary event this year, which is when I created this account. Um, this is my free-to-play account that I made specifically for this. Um, moving along. Um, but yeah, the uh, this uh, was the ship they're giving away. Much like the summer event is giving away the uh, uh, the Ryzen Corvette. This is a uh, science ship, as you can see. It's got a secondary deflector, heavy on the science abilities. I may fiddle with its, I need to fiddle with its abilities a little bit, but I'm really liking this ship, and I'm kicking out some serious oomph right now. I'm actually very pleased with it. Very pleased with how this is working right now. Well, yeah, but it's it's primarily a science ship. It's it it's working really well right now. I whoa. I mean, I'm playing on doing stuff on normal primarily right now, uh, but still, like, if I've got time to drop my science abilities on shit, they just whoa, they do not like it. All right, um. Let's see, hang on, let's... at the moment. Creeping up. Cool. I actually can buy another germanium carapace fragment. I'm going to need a total 20 of them for the full set that I'm going gunning for here. So I'm going to need 20 of the germanium carapace fragments and 3,000 gamma marks and then the dilithium for it. And I'll get the be able to get the full space set for Gamma, which is what I want. For, I actually want to run that on this ship. It looks like it's a pretty good science ship set, and uh, yeah, you're welcome, Old Mill. It's a solid ship. Um, hoping they do another. Uh, sorry, excuse me. My sh ah, there we go. Uh, let's see. Right, I was queuing up for another random TFO. I'm kind of hoping for a, gr a ground one. Be nice to get a ground one in here off the randoms because the you know oh my god not a single goddamn ground one really like I'm not normally I wouldn't be complaining about this but for once I want to do a goddamn ground one 
I'm going to have to que actively queue for a ground STF? TFO? That sucks. I hate ground. I don't like you. Ugh. I don't have to wait. This account does not have that, Andrea. This account is way too new. I have none of the stuff. Which is probably... I mean, again, it's again. I'm sort of doing a thing to sort of, you know, see how functional this is with a brand new account and not spending any money on the game. And so far, I've been pleasantly surprised, as I've said. Is there anybody on the other side? At least someone, okay.
The only four of us in this STF, actually. TFO. Oh my god! Why? Why? Why do people never look at who's moved over which side? Ugh. It's like, ugh. What you people? Like, ah. We need two on each side since there are only four of us. For you. Why did that not turn into those guys with my torpedoes? I hate this STF. It's not hard, it's just really fucking dull. Ugh. Uh, it's, the, it's Dyson, yes, and I'm, more, I'm very aware of that, Andrea, and I'm planning on picking that up at some point. <laughs> yeah, the grab, the grab medic torpedo is the endgame torpedo I want. Right now I'm using the plasma emission torpedo, which is very good for what I'm doing. Uh, basically, the trick with Particle Emission Plasma Torpedo, that's what it's called. The Gravimetric's better, but this will do for now. Basically, you want AoE stuff to dump, uh, to basically dump into your grab wells. Yeah, grab metrics are ideal. I would agree grab metrics are the best bet, but... Why can't people cut... I do not understand why people are incapable of doing the math on things like this and looking at it and going, huh, there are four of us and there are two sides we have to defend and do stuff on. Maybe we should have two on each side. Nope, nope, three on one. God fucking...
It may just be that. Okay, thank you. Allies got actually allies finally got ahead. Took till 25 seconds left in this goddamn thing for that to happen, but But yeah, it's nice and rapidly where the grab metric is. beat them. Alright. Alright, where's the dread? The dread's over here? Alright. Hopefully they all come over here. Guys, get your butts over here, you fucks. I did not mean to turn off that. Oop, ow. Mission complete. Beautiful. And we'll grab more dice and marks because I'm going to want those. But yeah, I've got, I'm basically saving up 
the lithium and stuff for the various things I'm going to want. Finish up the last of my fragments. <sighs> That's it's so weird, Andrea, because for a long while it was like I got ground more than anything, but I've got I've got to do a ground I gotta do a ground one, so Let's take a look at the ground STFs. Which one do I want to do? No. Ground, there we go. Which one makes me not hate all my hate my life for all eternity? That's the question. I could do transdimensional tactics. Uh, bug hunt's fine. I just I find bug hunt just tedious. I I hate hate fighting the goddamn insects. They're really annoying. They're not fun. Pelvic ascension maybe. Hope of Ascension is not the worst. Let's see if that pops. Basically, I just want to get into one where I can do polar on damage on ground with my stupid pistols I picked up. I forgot how long it takes for some things to queue to, for, to, for, to, queue to pop. Ugh. You know what? Just grab me what the other one I should probably queue is. Brotherhood of the Sword. That one usually pops reasonably quickly. Oh, no, I'm not doing the ground board. The, no, I'm not, I am not doing one of the board ground ones. I hate them. They're, they suck wildly. They're among the worst uh, TFOs they've got. The, the, ground, the, ground, the ground combat board ones are just awful. Awful. Total garbage. Pelvic ascension, great. Okay, cool. I'm totally okay with pelvic ascension. Pelvic ascension is actually kind of fun. It's not great. They're not the best things ever, but they're fine, and this character's actually good at it, so. <sighs> and I need to start doing, uh, honestly, I need to start doing, get, getting, uh, discovery marks for this character. I don't know what the, I don't know what the gear for the discovery well, look like I haven't taken a look at them yet, so I should at that should at some point. But yeah, you know. well, we'll see. The Imperial Terran forces are a great.
This is honestly one of the better put together ground TFOs in my experience. They actually thought about how to how to build it build a TFO over the ground that doesn't suck. Oh God, why is the briefing thing so long? Why so long? here and that dude's just standing there which seems sucky of him. Oh for crying out loud. Why can't people ever divide things up well? Why are you coming this way? There are four of us here now. Stop it. The crystal has been purified. Advance to the next We do not need four on the same thing. Holy shit, why do why are people so bad at this sort of thing? I do not understand why people are incapable of going, yeah, we should divvy this up. I don't want to be the one to relocate, as oh, as I almost always am. These people are fucking idiots. Dear God, we've, it's a thing with multiple objectives. We should all do the objectives together. No! I'm leaving that one to them. Fuck this noise. I think this is the right one. It's not going to one where they are. It amazes me that people are so bad at this sort of thing. 
it's just not that hard to figure out. Is this the wrong one? Am I on the wrong one? Nope. So this is one where this, the guy could actually use help. No, I didn't want to go back to the spire. I'm an idiot. That was my bad. I did not mean to do that. I was trying to. I was trying to loot. Oh, Andrea, it's not. Tr it's not limited to ground TFOs. Uh, the problem is people do not understand in, t in Star Trek Online how to divvy up multiple objectives. It doesn't matter whether it's ground or space. They're bad at it. People are bad at divvying up objectives. And it's, hopefully that's something that, you know, people are watching this video can learn, is that you don't, you don't, you don't have, you, when there's multiple objectives, you split up. It's really not that hard. Why is everybody coming to this one? Go to seven! Jesus fucking Christ. Okay, I'm gonna go there. Since these people are being stupid as balls. Jesus Christ. Probably not, no. It'll be close. We've got four minutes. It's actually doable, still. Partially because I actually, partially because I keep redeploying, because I keep realizing that everybody's, almost everybody's gone to one of them. It's like, This is going to be a close run thing. See, we got those. Now everybody can come to this, and hopefully they will.
It's gonna be close. This is going to be close, but I think we might actually get the get the, get all three. Uh, what? I'll show you in a second. Uh. I'm not being super efficient about it right now, but... Um we oh, we got it. Thank God. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I'm running... Um, uh, so I'm running uh, Chronoton Mind Barrier, Transphasic Bomb, Turret Fabrication, uh, Ambush Turret Fabrication, and Shield Recharge. spawns here. I do not have the prison kit module because I don't actually like that one much. I tried using it and I don't actually like how it plays out. It's effective, but I don't actually enjoy using it. I don't know if I have it on this character. I have it on my on my main account. I just don't know if I have it here. Place this. Let's see where they spawn down here. Which is the spawn point down here? Is it over here? 
Oh, it might be over here is the spawn point I'm thinking of. Yeah, it is. Okay. Let's drop some mines there. People, you don't need to run around to defend stuff on this one. Get ready. The Terrans are sending in their elite forces. Oh yeah, their elite forces. Yep, that's annoying. Hi. Oh dear. I better get a promotion out of this. That's rare that I actually tried that much aggro. Victory. Oh, the factory fire module? That one's interesting. Oh, the passive medical generator is actually good. Yeah, I don't have any passive stuff on this character. I'm not a big fan of this. I've tried the, the Solar Gateway. I've used a fair bit. I'm not sure it kicks out enough damage to be worthwhile. It's okay. Given the amount of noise it makes, I don't like it, but I, it's not the worst. The Ambush Turrets are great. Um, eh, half a million energy credits. That's not, not, nothing to sneeze out on a free-to-play account. All right. Well, we made some progress. Oh, that actually got me an endeavor a perk point. Nice. Um, oh, I guess we'll grab range weapon damage for ground. Oh, we did fine. We we you know we did over we did overall fine. Just you know, we took down the t we took we we completed it. So you know. All right. Uh, what do I want to do? <sighs> All right, so hmm. <laughs> yeah, I can see that being a bit rare, Andrea. Um, let's see. Oh. Okay. All right, I think I'm going to wrap up doing the free-to-play part of this stream uh, now. So uh, thank you for everybody watching on YouTube. I hope you enjoyed this. hope this was helpful for some for some of y'all. Uh, I think probably the first half was the most useful stuff on there. Um, oh, that's one thing I want to show you. Uh, right, I almost forgot. I'm a dumb. I mentioned earlier that you can sell the... Lahun, the favor things. I can't. I can, cannot pronounce that to save my life. God damn it! I cannot remember how to spell the goddamn word. Ugh. Where are you? Uh, favors. Where are you on here? Why can't I find you on here? Why did I do that? That was dumb. Ugh. Here they are. Lo Lunat. Uh, individually, they're selling for about 9k. Sending price per unit. All right, now, so right now they're selling for about 6,000 uh, EC each. So, you know, you can make a little bit of money by, you know, just farming and selling them. 
Low Lunat. Low Lunat. Low Lunat. So you know, if you, you know, if you just grind, if you grind them, you can sell them. And make you make a fair bit of EC. I might actually work on doing that off stream. Um, another way to make EC without actually investing money. So it's not the most efficient way, but it is a way to do it. But yeah, thank you guys for watching on YouTube, and I will see you guys soon. Bye.